So do you think social media is killing the fitness industry? Yes, dot, 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 and no. Uh, I mean, I think social media is great. Like it's a place where we can discover people. We can connect with individuals that we wouldn't have, you know, from afar, from across the world. I've connected with many people that become lifelong friends through social media. But at the same time, the regurgitation of all these different exercises and modalities that we see that are exertainment aren't good for most individuals. And then we keep spreading this misinformation, right? Like, uh, I won't just do a regular squat holding dumbbells, which is very good for you. Why? Because it doesn't get as many views. So I actually think that I'm part of the problem. So I apologize to anybody watching. I am a part of the problem a little bit. We just see these crazy exercises and things. Everybody thinks that they need to crush it and go hard at it and do, you know, fancy different movements where that individual that might have six pack or, you know, big TNA, right? They didn't get them from doing those fancy movements. They probably used isolated or compound movements, depending on whatever modality it was to get that specific body. And it wasn't doing these crazy, you know, balancing training type movements that are just going to get you the, the views and likes and comments and follows, but it'll get you recognized. So I get it. It's just a slippery slope. Do you think images that people may have nowadays, these, these complexes with themselves, do you think it's actually brought on? because of social media more than it was say in the past before we had access to you know a top trainer or top fitness influencer so to speak uh, people feel they need to look a certain way i think it definitely magnifies it right you know years past you always thought that always oh, only you know models and magazines and a little bit more predominantly females but now even myself you know like sitting down right now like i know that I mean, I'm in the single digit body fats. I'm like, oh, my skin's folding over right here. Like even the back of my mind, I'm not shirtless. I'm thinking about it. Everything's heightened and, and everything's posted. So yeah, of course, it, it's really hard um, not to think poorly of yourself when the world is a mirror, you know, and you're reflecting on to those other people and those individuals and you're seeing that and, and you have that FOMO. And even though like if I go on national TV, like I'll go on national TV, like wow, I was on the biggest, you know, talk show in the country the other day. And all of a sudden I see somebody post something on social media and they look ripped and they've got more views or whatever. I'm like, oh my, it almost made me feel bad. But I was just on this huge program. So taking that moment to stop and if social media just brings that, you know, those negative feelings toward you, maybe you need to stay off for a little bit. I've taken breaks on social media. You probably see me like, hey, I'm taking a break for a couple of weeks. And people are like, are you okay? What's going on? You know what? I'm probably even better that I'm taking a break. But at the same time, this is part of my job. I need to do it. It's a modern day resume. And you have to have that social media presence attached to whatever you're doing. Uh, even to like my book deal, they looked at what my social media presence was, which annoyed me admittedly because I couldn't have all these celebrities or anybody else saying like this is what you've done or these magazines or anything it was what else can you offer to help us so when you're consistently you know trying to feed someone else I feel like you go hungry yourself do you think that influence that you know a social media personality can have in in terms of having you know x amount of followers millions right over the actual credibility of say a fitness professional or doctor do you think that could sway someone's opinion or viewpoint in terms of looking towards this person with the big following as opposed to the actual medical professional? Of course. I mean, we all do it, right? We see four or five million followers or whatever it is, and naturally you're going to gravitate towards that where there could be an amazing video or a post that might have 50 likes or a thousand views. And you're like, oh, why does it only have a thousand views? You know, like it, it, it doesn't matter how credible that information is. I, I think it's natural. It's like the old bar trick they used to do all the time in nightclubs. They'd have, they'd have a line outside of the door. Why was there a line outside of the door when it was empty inside? Because they wanted to create that. Like, oh, there's something happening right there. So of course, if this person has views, that they're gonna bought the views. There could be all sorts of different things happening. There. They could be in engagement groups. There's all sorts of little tricks that people can use. Not saying that, you know, people don't have real views and things, but it, it, it's smoke and mirrors and flashy and you know, the what's the grass is greener and, and whatever analogy you want to put to it, but absolutely. So there are people that I do follow that have a limited amount of people who follow them. They put out consistent content um, that's good and, and they stick to what they believe in. And I do see their pages growing a little bit more and more and particularly people that are more interested in that. And I do believe that your followers are also a reflection of yourself. If you're going to be posting something and, and you're cussing and you're being rude towards people, then that gives your followers uh, the permission 
to also be rude in return. And you'll see that in the comments and, and, and the things that they're posting as well, if you look at that. So picture social media as a window, like you walk by that window, if somebody's looking at your life, what would they see? And are you gonna be happy about that? And if so, great, keep going. So it sounds like there's somewhat of a, a, a dangerous line that we teeter with social media in terms of trusting you know, this big influencer as opposed to listening to the professional advice. How do you see the best way to navigate what is safe for you and just being in awe of someone else giving, you know, bad information? Yeah, well, one, there can be a professional that can be an influencer. So let's, you know, make that clear distinction because there definitely are. Uh, but most professionals that are dealing with people in, you know, in person or Zoom or whatever it is now, um, they're not having enough time to film all this consistent content. Eventually there might be like somebody behind them that's doing that, that can elevate their um, exposure, if you will. But I would look at, to that professional and see what are their certifications? Where did they go to school? Do they reference things that they're saying? Are they just reposting a bunch of stuff? You know, are, are they having, you know, a scientific background and whether it's a biomechanics or they're showing a squat or whatever that may be. And are they willing to admit that they're wrong when they're wrong, right? Because I think that's what people are afraid of. They're putting something out, it's like calls them out, you know, weeks later, months later, oh, this study came out or, or I found out that you're wrong this way. People are so quick to judge and say that you're wrong, but it's okay to say, hey, you know what? I was wrong. Uh, and, and it's okay because new research keeps coming out or, uh, you know, new anecdotal evidence, right? I, I think that bibliography, having the credentials and certifications and working with individuals, um, I think you can hopefully wean it out from there. If you're somebody that's just doing fancy stuff all the time, you don't ever see them working with anybody, referencing any resources um, or answering and just being a good person in the comments, I think that's red flag right there. So what do you think needs to be done to change it? Oh, I just think consistent recognition um, and, and people being aware and asking for more, like when you want change, you know, people protest, you can protest these certain accounts, essentially. You don't have to tell them, hey, I'm unfollowing you, I'm blocking you, whatever. You don't need to be rude about it. Just stop following them, stop engaging on them. And then eventually, hopefully, you know, that will, pick up and as you find more reputable resources, whether it's on social media or outside of there, um, then hopefully that traction, you know, and the scale starts tipping uh, in the other way. But it, it's an animal, it's a beast that doesn't seem to be going anywhere. But I do see a lot of people, um, especially that are really engaged and wanting to know um, about their body or nutrition or sleep, whatever it is, looking for that specific information that seems to be peer reviewed or, you know, science backed um, or anything like that. I mean, there's a lot of different things that can make people help healthy and, and help individuals. So find what works for you and what you gravitate towards and, you know, you know, get it from a few different resources. And often those resources really know each other as well. And, and they talk and they'll collaborate too. So um, send them a note and if they, if they're rude and they, you know, send something back to you and just cut them off detoxify from that person. Um, realize that um, you are your own person. You're your own body, your own workout, your own mind. You have your own thoughts, your own feelings, and, and don't shun those away. I struggle with depression myself, and I'm now aware when I feel bad, when I feel poorly, whether I'm going on TV or, you know, um, doing something with fit tv like these are great opportunities but sometimes you just don't feel good and recognizing that so recognizing that whether it's a it's a mental barrier or you need to take a day off or you're extra sore realize like hey i can take a day off from working out right now let's do some working in internally inside of myself and that will benefit me in the long run so focus on you and those around you and i really think that you'll be better off for it thanks joy thank you